for being here, being part of our Sunday night service. We're glad that you're here, especially if you're visiting with us. Thank you for be, being with us tonight. Let's begin our time together uh, with a prayer. Our Father, thank you for all of the blessings that you bestow upon us. And Father, we are so thankful that you are, were willing to send your Son to this earth and die so that we can have that opportunity to go to heaven if we'll live right on this earth. Be with us as we study together from your word. And Father, we pray that you will always look down upon us and bless us. Father, thank you for the congregation that meets here. And we are so thankful for all of the many things that you've done for this congregation through these years. And we pray that we'll always be faithful to you. These things we ask through Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, worship the King. Wow. 
Would you bow with me, please? Dear loving and gracious Heavenly Father, we humbly bow before you this evening, thanking you for everything you've done for us, Lord. Thanking you for all the blessings of life, physical blessings, Father, but especially the spiritual blessings. We're so very thankful for the opportunity to gather here this evening to encourage one another, to fellowship one another, Father, but especially for the opportunity to worship you. We pray that our worship this evening will be pleasing and acceptable to you, Father, giving you the praise, giving you the glory for all, Lord. We're mindful for all those who are hurting, Lord, for sickness, surgeries. We realize, Father, you know what they need better than we know how to ask, Lord. We pray especially, Father, this evening for Brother Greg as he starts his journey. We pray that you would keep him safe, Father, bring him back to us, but Especially, Father, we pray that you will bless his efforts. We pray that your kingdom may grow. And may we pray that souls will be saved because of the work he's doing. We pray for this congregation here in Boonville. We're so very thankful for all the things you've given us and blessed us with. We pray that you'll be the leaders. Help them to make the decisions that would help us to not only grow in number, but also spirit, Father. Please be with Brother Jim this evening as he breaks the, breaks the, the bread of life to us, Father. We pray that it may be accepted, and may fall on tender hearts, Father. But we realize that we are broken. And we realize that we are so dependent upon your precious Son. We pray that you please forgive us for we fail you and help us to always strive to get to better each and every day of our lives, Lord. Lord, please go with us the rest of this worship service and the rest of our lives. In Christ's name. I'll be reading Psalms chapter 51, verses 1 and 2. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Thank you, Brother Barrett. I join with Brother Tommy in welcoming you here tonight. I appreciate the reading of the beginning of Psalm 51. When I think about someone that's broken, and I think about David, how David was such a righteous person, and then thou art the man. He realized how broken he was, and if I had to uh, give you any scripture to read, to understand how you can humble yourself before God, I would encourage you to read Psalm 51. This song, I really appreciate uh, Brother Mike leading this song before we have the lesson today. Uh, Just as I am, I come broken. I think sometimes it's good for us to go back and look at the songs that we're, we're singing. You know, I want us tonight to to look at some Bible facts related to this song and look at uh, the principles that are stressed in this particular song. If you'll remember this morning, Mike led Just As I Am as our invitation song. It's one of those great invitation songs. I didn't realize until I was preparing this lesson how long ago the words were written, all the way back 1835. Charlotte Elliott, and the music I think you can see is written by William Bradley. The I Am Broken addition to this was done in 2009, and you can see on the screen the names of the people who were responsible for the lyrics and the name of the person who was responsible for the arrangement. You know, what we have is we have an old song with a new twist. But the message of both the old song and the new edition is the timeless as the Bible itself. Just uh, look at these words. Let's go back to the old song to start with. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. I don't know what verse that reminds you of, but what it reminds me of is what Jesus said when he was instituting the Lord's Supper. 
Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And then you go on, And that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. You know, Jesus, there are several places that he gives an invitation. One of those is in Matthew, the 11th chapter. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But the one that really stands out to me is what he said in Revelation 3 and verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. The context of this is he's talking to the church in Laodicea, a church that wasn't hot, that wasn't cold. They were lukewarm. They made him so sick, he wanted to spew them out of his mouth. And look what he says. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He wants us to come back to Him even if we're broken, and hence this song. And you go to the second verse of just as I am, just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot. You know, Peter said in 2 Peter 3 and verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering to us not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So not only is Jesus standing at the door and knocking, He wants every one of us to respond. I, I know the devil was prepared for the devil and his angels. He doesn't want any one of us to go to he hell, but, and that's why He is so long-suffering with us. He puts up with us when we need to, are empty and need to be filled. To thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Remember Saul of Tarsus? He had seen Jesus as he was on the road to Damascus. That great light shined about him, blinded him. He was told to go into the city and there he'd be told him what he must do to be saved. He prayed, he fasted for three days. And then when Ananias the preacher came to him, he said, and now why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And this song says, to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot. We can go down with Jesus into the watery grave of baptism and His blood will cleanse us of every sin. If I could get you to index for me one up there, please. You know, as we uh, think about the... Uh, new part of this song, I want us to remember how Jesus surrounded himself and the kind of people that Jesus surrounded himself with and, and then try to make some application to ourselves. You know, his apostles were ordinary, uneducated people. Some of them were fishermen. I believe Nathaniel was prejudiced. You'll remember, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And James and John were called sons of thunder. I can just imagine some of the intensity of the things that they said. Some people believe that they're called that because at one time they wanted Jesus to call down lightning from heaven and destroy some people. I don't know why they were called that, but they had some flat spots, it looks like. Peter was certainly less than perfect. Matthew was a tax collector, and you know what they thought about tax collectors. But when the group was together there on the day of Pentecost, then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? 
And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? I don't just think about these. Jesus was accused on multiple occasions of eating and associating with sinners. And, and while most of Jesus' associates were uneducated, uh, as a matter of fact, when he came into Jerusalem on the donkey, you remember how the, that the people were uh, praising him. And if you go back and you look at who were on the outskirts, the people that were on the outskirts were the people that couldn't afford to get the good places on the inner part of the city when they'd have one of these feasts. The people that were gathered around when Pilate said, what shall I do with this man that's called Jesus, were probably more oriented to the people that had a lot of money. And they were crying out, crucify him, crucify him. So there, was, there seemed to be a, a separation of how people accepted Jesus between the rich and the poor. But Jesus did not discriminate against the rich. I've just listed four people there that the Bible would lead us to believe were rich. Nicodemus was rich. Zacchaeus was rich. Joseph of Arimathea, who provided the tomb for Jesus, was rich. The Apostle Paul could go to the best education that uh, Jews had available to them. So I would, would conclude that the Apostle Paul was well off at the time he became a Christian. Jesus, though, associated with a lot of different kind of people. I, I think about Jesus and the Samaritan woman at the well. And even when he talked with her, he, it, I don't know if it's the first time, but I believe it's one of the very first times that he admitted to anybody who he was. He's, when she talked about the Messiah coming, he said, I who speak to you am he. And when they brought the woman caught in adultery to Jesus, you'll remember that Jesus told her to go and, and sin no more. And, and Jesus interacted he, with people that other people would avoid. You can remember when he actually touched the leper. Even the way Je Jesus interacted with earthly leaders is impressive to me. You can think about how he interacted with the high priest, even at his own trial. He showed respect to the high priest. You can remember how he interacted with Pilate, told Pilate, you wouldn't have this power unless God had given it to you. But Jesus surrounded himself with a variety of people. He didn't discriminate against other people. So I want you to, as you got to keep that in mind, let's look at the words of this new part of the song. I come broken to be mended. I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ, the Lamb. So just think about this. People who were not perfect before they began following Christ, God used them perfectly to do His will. When I think about it, the greatest example I can think of this was the Apostle Paul. I mean, you think about a person who would hold the garments as Philip, or as rather as Stephen, is being Stoned. Or you think about a person who gets letters from the high priest and, and is going to Damascus to capture Christians to take and, and throw them into prison. And even after Paul became a Christian, he had a hard time forgiving himself. He was so bad. He even called himself the, the chief of, of sinners. But God used him. He used him in the half of the New Testament that we have is a manifestation of how God used Paul. As a matter of fact, Jesus did not come to save 
perfect people. You remember Zacchaeus. The people in Luke 19 and verse 7 called Zacchaeus a sinner. And in response to what they were thinking, Jesus said in verse 10 that he came to seek and to save that which was lost. I want to look at an example of how Jesus dealt with less than perfect people. This is found in Luke, the seventh chapter, verses 36 through 50. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with her, the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with fragrant oil. Then when the Pharisees who had in, Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he said, teacher, say it. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, You have rightly judged. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears, and wiped them with her hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Then he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The people thought of this woman as unworthy, an outcast from society. The Bible doesn't tell us specifically what kind of sin she was responsible for. The, Jesus said she had many. She could have been a prostitute. Whatever she did, it was known by the town that she wasn't doing things that were acceptable to good society. Uh, Jesus thought of her as the purpose for his coming, the reason he came to earth to seek and to save the lost. Uh, Jesus also turned the tables on Simon. Can't you imagine whilst what Simon thought of himself? I'm a Pharisee. Oh, look how good I am today. I've opened up my house to this person and, and we've, we've invited Jesus in to eat with us. Don't you know he was embarrassed? when this woman with this bad reputation comes and interrupts the dinner party and starts smelling up the house with all the perfume that she's putting on Jesus. But Jesus turned the tables on him. She's, Jesus made him look at himself in the mirror. The words of Jesus had to sting when Simon heard them. You know, she showed kindness and love and hospitality to Jesus, but Simon's lack of caring was in stark contrast 
to this person with a sinful reputation. I think this should uh, cause each of us to remember. One of the things we should remember are the writings of Paul. In Romans 3 and verse 23, he said that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Or maybe we should remember the words of John in John, 1 John, the first chapter in verse 10, where he said, if we say that we have no, not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Let's go back to this song. And I'm welcomed with open arms, praise God, just as I am. Doesn't that remind you of the father and how the father ran to meet the prodigal son when he came home? It was had open arms, put a ring on his finger, put a robe on him, kill the fatted calf. He knew that that son who was dead spiritually had changed and was coming home and he was so excited. And that's the same way this song tells us that our father is going to meet us when we come home. And I'm welcome with open arms, praise God, just as I am. And then it goes back to that old song. Just as I am, I would be lost. But mercy and grace, my freedom brought. Paul, in writing to the Ephesians, said, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And now to glory in your cross, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. In Galatians, the second chapter, in verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That's what this song is driving us to make a decision about. Take our broken lives and turn them into a life, that, a life that is bringing glory to Jesus Christ. I want you to look at the words of the chorus again. And as we look at this, let's think about ourselves. I come broken to be bended. I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. And I'm welcome with open arms. Praise God, just as I am. What words applied to that sinful woman's soul? Would you say that she's broken? Would you say that she's wounded? Would you say that she is desperate? She had to be desperate to interrupt that dinner party and come in and cry all of those tears and wipe Jesus' feet with her hair and anoint him with that fragrant oil. Would you say that she was empty? Would you say that she knew she was guilty? Well, what words applied to that Simon the Pharisee's soul? Was he broken? Was he wounded? He thought he was perfectly good until Jesus got through with him. Was he desperate? He thought he was full of everything spiritual, but I'm sure after he heard Jesus, he knew he was empty. And maybe even knew that he was guilty. Well, let's be really personal here. What does my soul need? Is my soul broken? Does it need to be mended? Is my soul wounded? Does it need to be healed? Is it, am I desperate? Do I need to be rescued? Am I empty? Do I need to be filled? Am I guilty? Do I need to be pardoned? 
I come broken to be mended. I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. And I'm welcome with open arms and praise God just as I am. Praise God just as I am. If you need to be mended, filled, pardoned, won't you come right now as we stand and sing?
Good evening. Good to see everybody out tonight. And of course, again, and we always want to thank our visitors for being here. I do not have a lot of announcements tonight, nor uh, many people giving me a lot of things to announce. So just please make sure you remember those in prayer. Brother Greg, John Roten, Preston Miles, and Nada Bullock, and Jerry Hester. And then there's several more, of course, on our prayer list. And then we have a few activities going on this weekend that we need to be ready for. Um, we need to be prayerful for those leaving for the Campbell, 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 excuse me, Missouri, uh, and the ladies' retreat, and then the teen Halloween party uh, in the TAC this weekend. I do have this card I want to read. Dear Christian family, thank you so much for all of your prayers for us. Please continue to keep us in your prayers as I go through chemo and the stem cell transplant. Thank you all for the cards you sent. They brightened our days, and we look forward to getting them. Thank you again in Christian love, Paul and Pam Morris. If you have not had a chance to partake of the Lord's Supper, of course, we want to give you that opportunity so you can now, uh, when we sing this song, exit to the back and uh, go to the little chapel and we'll be prepared for you. Sunday and learn your word and study it without fear of persecution, Lord. And just please be with those missionaries who are overseas and we help them to continue their good work. And just please be with those who need you the most. And please help us take what was said today and apply it to our lives throughout this week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> 